Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are going to talk about microbial exopolysaccharide synthesis and metabolism. So let's get started. So in this video, we'll start off with a small introduction about what it is all about. So these microbial exopolysaccharides are natural high molecular weight polymers of sugar residues secreted out by microorganisms for the survival. So we are going to talk about the decomposition, their survival and their whole lot of metabolism that is involved. So these are some natural high molecular weight polymers of sugar residues which are secreted out by microorganisms for the survival. Also there are some biotic stress and abiotic stress that they need to survive through which are pH, temperature, salinity and also competition with other microbes. Also, these extracellular polymeric substances may include exopolysaccharides and other macromolecules such as DNA, lipids and proteins. Also, these microbial exopolysaccharides generally exist in two forms. So, these can be a cell, cell bound form or can be released form. So, in cell bound form, these are mucoidal glycocalyx or present in capsules, seals or slime layers. So which are collectively known as mucoidal glycocalyx, which are closely adhered to the bacterial cell surface. So this is the cell bound part. And whereas for released, so these are released into the surrounding medium as free exopolysaccharides. So these microbial exopolysaccharides do exist in two forms. So moving on from here. So talking about the rules of these microbial exopolysaccharides. So these have roles in defense, protection against environmental factors, microphage attack and phagocytosis. Then we have attachment to surfaces such as V. coli attaches to intestine. Also it has roles in nutrient gathering such as S. mutants. Also in cell movement, antigenicity and they establish the structural and functional integrity of bacterial biofilms or cell aggregation. Also they help in retention of water and also in sorption of exo exogenous organic matter components and organic inorganic ions. So these are some of the rules for microbial exopolysaccharides. So, this, so talking about some of the examples of these exopolysaccharides. So one of them comes into my mind is glycocalyx. So that's why I mentioned in the first. So with that, we will be talking about some more exopolysaccharides and some of its features as well. So talking about the glycocalyx. So glycocalyx is a gelatinous network of polysaccharides extending from the surface of bacteria. Also, this is composed of polysaccharide, polypeptide and or sometimes both. It also encompasses both capsules and slime layers. So talking about some of its features that we just read about, which is the capsule and the slime layer. So, the, so talking about the capsule part of glycocalyx, it's a well organized and a gelatinous layer. Also, it contributes to cell adherence and protection. Also, it is not easily washed off. And the S mutants in dental caries may use its capsule as a source of nutrition by breaking down and utilizing the sugars where energy stores are low. So these can be a source of energy for these mutants. So this is this was some of the important features for glycocalyx and its capsule. So it pose, uh, poses a capsule which is very important for their survival. So moving on with, so talked about the slime layer as well. Also the capsule contains uh, determined by negative staining. So they can be determined through negative staining. And Bacillus anthracis has a capsule of poly acid. So these are some of the points that may, you may read through or may like to remember it. Also talked about the second most uh, prominent feature of glycocalyx, which is the slime layer. So slime layer is an unorganized and a glycocalyx that loses loosely attached to the cell wall. So it's unorganized and it is loosely attached to glycocalyx and it's very easily removable. So this was about slime layer. And talking about the third most important feature of glycocalyx, which is the S layer. So S layer is a regularly structured layer present on the surface of many gram positive and gram negative bacteria. Also, it is very common among archaea and it is composed of protein or glycoprotein. So this is a, another feature for glycopalis. So this is, a, as said, these are some of the important features of glycocalyx such as the capsule, slime layer and S layer. 
So moving on with this, so you may just give these all the parts a read. So which are very important parts for microbial exopolysaccharides and we'll be talking about more of these in my coming videos. So moving on. Also the S layer adheres directly to the surface of outer membrane and the gram negative bacteria in peptidoglycan. So these are some of the features for S layer as said, these, are, these can be detected through gram negative and gram positive bacteria as well. So talking about its function as a whole. So the glycocalyx protects cells against ions, pH, osmotic stress, enzymes, complement attack, phagocytosis, and some more bacterium. Also it maintains cell shape and envelop rigidity. Also it contributes to the virulence of some pathogens. So these are some of the important and easy fear functions for them. So this is not a complex part and these I've especially mentioned some of the easy points for your understanding. Also, I'll be uh, moving on to the complex part in my coming videos. So moving on with this. So this is a big list for all the exopolysaccharides. So you may just pause the video and just give it a watch. So you can just check out all of these polysaccharides and all of the scientific names and all I've given here. So moving on with this. So talking about some of the important exopolysaccharides are xanthin, dextrin, gelin, bacterial alginates, cordelin, hyaluronic acid, pulerin, bacterial cellulose, chitin and chitosin, sclerogrucan, levan and polysaccharides of allegheny genes. So these are some of the important exopolysaccharides. So in some of them I'll be discussing in this video and in my next video. So, so moving on with the first uh, exopolymer saccharide, which is xanthate. So this is the biopolymer bio uh, table for your for your application part. Also, these are some of the exopolysaccharides as you can see. So xanthin is present at the bottom. So you can see the application corresponding to it. So its application is in emulsification and gelatinization. And so for all of these exopolysaccharides, you can check it out and all its applications are corresponding present. So moving on with this. So here we have another uh, table for you. So this is a table for all the exopolysaccharides under bacteria and fungi. So this is all the one of the exopolysaccharides for bacteria as you can see. So these are xanthine, dextran, alginate, curdlin and gelin. And for fungi, we have sclerodocan and pulin. And all of the organisms corresponding to it, I'll be explaining about the organisms part in this video. Also, its composition. You can see, so this is the detailed overview of this. So moving on with this. So talking about the first EPS or exopolysaccharide, which is xanthin. So it's an acidic exopolysaccharide. So it's an acidic exopolysaccharide. And it consists of a pentasaccharide repeat unit composed of d glucosyl d manosyl and d glucuronyl acid residues in a molar ratio of 2 is to 2 is to 1. So it is composed of three subunits or repeat units such as glucosyl, manosyl, and glucuronyl acid residues in a ratio of 2 is to 2 is to 1. And it has various proportions of O acetyl and pyruvyl residues. Also, it is discovered at uh, RRN in 1950 and it is approved by FDA in 1969. So, it came into the world by the end of 1969. Also, Xanthomonas compestris, which is aerobic gram positive plant pathogenic. So, this is the organism that leads to the formation of xanthin. So, this, these, these were the important aerobic gram positive plant pathogenic species or Xanthomonas campestris, which led to the uh, formation of xanthine. So some of its properties are it's highly viscous, or uh, it has high viscosity at low concentration. It is pseudoplasticity, so its viscosity decreases under shear strain, and it is insensitive to wide range of temperature, pH, and electrolyte. So these are some of the properties of xanthine. Moving on with this, so it's a structure of xanthine, so the entire structure of xanthine and how it looks like. And it's also, uh, as you can see, so if you isolate that particular bacteria and you can just stain it on agar nutrient medium, so you can get this. 
also so talking about its biosynthesis it's a very easy process as you can see so biosynthesis are the all the eps producers all the bacteria which produce exopolysaccharides such as the xanthin is produced by xanthomonas campestris and all of the other bacteria which produce other exopolysaccharide so it starts with them so it, the process of biosynthesis start with all of the bacteria and fungi which produce eps and then we move to the carbon source so they need proper carbon source and nitrogen source for their survival and growth which leads to the formation of all of the eps and further if they are supplemented with carbon source and cultivated in a proper bioreactor or a shaker flask as you can see in this picture along with so basically these bacteria are isolated and these are grown under a proper nutri medium which contains all the carbon and nitrogen source will lead to the formation of all of these eps as you can see so we need to maintain all of the parameters such as ph temperature aeration and with that nutrient source along with the bacterium so that we can get the eps such as dextran and all of these as you can see so this is a simple procedure for eps biosynthesis and how we can extract eps so it all starts from eps producers then we have to carbon producers and all of the nutrient source then we need to cultivate it with the help of a bioreactor and then we finally get it get the end product so this is the thing for the biosynthesis as you can see so the this is the simple table or a, a representation of it so as you can see carbon substrate assimilation so the carbon source are, are absorbed and all of the intracellular synthesis of the uh, polysaccharides are done here and which leads to the Ex, uh, exudation of polysaccharides out of the cell. So this is a simple biosynthesis of EPS. As you can see more examples of here. So you can just pause the video and watch it nicely. So this is all the same uh, considering different species of it. So let's just keep this video till here. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching this video. I'll be back with another video very soon. Thank you.